Hey, what's up? Jason here from Unity3D.College. Today we're going to talk about using scriptable objects to pass data around or store state in your game at runtime. So we're going to start off with a simple example and then we'll go into a slightly more complicated one and some extra resources where you can learn a lot more about this. So to begin, we're just going to create a new script. Just go right click create C sharp script and we're going to call this, um, let's just call it player health for now. And I'm going to open that up. And what we're going to do is change this from a mono behavior to a scriptable object. There we go. And then we're going to add the create asset menu attribute above. That just allows us to actually create this object in, um, in the project view. So one thing I want to put on here is a, an integer for the health. So I'll just do public int health. Uh, this probably should be a serialized field with a property getter setter but I, I don't know if it really matters in this case most of the time I wouldn't have just a public property but I think in here maybe it's okay so far I've been okay with it at least okay so let's go back to the editor and create an instance of this so we just right click hit create and choose player health right here and you see here we have a new player health object and it's got this health field so far not super useful so let's hook it up to an actual object or two now so I'm going to create a new thing here, a new script, and we'll call this uh, player. And we'll open that up, and let's add a player health field to it. So we'll just do a serialized field, so it'll show up in the inspector. So serialized field, and then we'll do private player health health. Or right, let's name it player health, make it match. There we go. And then in the update, I think what we'll do is if input dot get mouse button down, so we'll just check for a left click. Then what we're gonna do is go player health dot health minus minus. Let's fix the formatting with control K, control D, clear some of this extra space up. And now what this is doing, we'll assign the player health scriptable object here. When we left click in the game view, we should be changing the health variable of the player health just decrementing it by one. IntelliSense isn't quite right right now, but you'll see it's just this integer right here that's gonna change. So let's create a player object. So just a game object, and I think I'll make my player a cube today. And we'll name him player, and add the player script. Now I need to assign a player health object here, so take the one from my project view, drop that in, and I'm going to hit play, but I'm going to select the new player health object right here. Now, as I click, you should see that number keep going down. Now, we started them off at zero health. Not super useful. Not a good health number. But you can see it doesn't matter. As we click, this value is going down in here, right, in the scriptable object. If I stop playing, you see that this value actually saves there and stays there. So you can kind of use this as a way to save off state, too. Um, could get a little bit messy though, so make sure that if you're doing this, recognize that once you do a build or change things or replace the files, do an update, that stuff would all get wiped away. So it may not be the best way to do it, but it's something you can do to persist stuff if you really wanted to. Now, let me um, jump in and show you how this system can be a little bit more useful. So let's create a new UI object. So let's just create, uh, we'll start with a text. And I'm gonna make this text a little bit bigger. Make it a little bit taller. Uh, maybe crank up the font size just a bit. And put in some text there. 100, that's a good number. That works, that fits, we're good. Okay, so what I wanna do is hook this text up to read the player health without it having to know anything about the player. So it'll be 100% decoupled. So just create a new script here. We'll call this um, UI health text. And I can just add this directly onto the text object. There we go, drop that there. We'll open up the script, and in here, all we're gonna need is a reference to a player health, and then we can just kinda have it automatically update without needing to know anything about the player. So to do that, just go um, serialize field. Again, so it shows up in the inspector, and do a private uh, player health, player health. Just, just like that, same as we did on the player. And then delete this all out. And then in our update, we could just do something like text.text .text equals player health dot health dot two string. Now we don't have a text.text .text defined yet, so let's do that. What we need is an awake, just do private void awake. 
and we just do um, text equals get component text. And ah, there we go, just like that. But we need a using statement for Unity Engine.ui so that text actually exists. And then I should be able to. Oh, I can't generate the field because uh, IntelliSense is still bugging out a little bit on me today. So just do private text text. Ah, auto complete. Not what I wanted. There we go. So this is going to create a UI text reference. So we'll just basically get the component and cache it. And then in the update, we'll set the actual text value of the text object um, to the health. So let's save and try that out. So if I hit play, oh, there we go. Got it to compile. I need to assign the player health here. So before we play, let's do that. Let's drop the player health in, hit play again. And now this health value is already at negative 14. It went to the previous value. And as I click, you see that the player health is going down, the text value is going down, and my UI and my player are now pretty decoupled. There's no code in there at all. I don't have to call into player.health% or player.gethealth or anything like that. There's no code coupling at all. It's all just defined through the editor however we want. You know, just drop in the variable that we want. And we could have a folder for variables and have all of these scriptable objects in there. But now this is, like I said, a pretty simple example. I want to dive over to a slightly more complicated example that I think is more flexible and even more useful. It came from a, a really good talk from Unite 2017. Again, I'll link that at the uh, at the bottom so you can check it out. It's nice video. It's pretty long, but goes in depth on uh, how you can use these systems and do really cool stuff. So for now, stop talking about it though and just jump over to this better folder and open up my demo scene. Um, and I'm not even gonna save that one. So here you see we've got a player, we've got a little health bar and it's very similar. As I click, you'll see that the, the value goes down. The health bar actually just kind of drops. There we go, clicking faster, the health drops. But when I stop, it goes back up to full. When I play, it kind of resets. It's a, li a little bit better. Uh, we also have a couple other options here with the way this is set up. So here if I select the enemy, let's rename capsule to enemy, keep things consistent. You see that now he has three fields on here. There's a current HP, which is referencing this current health object. And then there's a max HP and a move speed. Um, these are actually just integers or floats. They're, they're values instead of references here. And the way it's set up, I can just kind of click this little box here and pick if I want to use a constant value or if I want to use a variable. And I can do that for any of these. It's just set up so that I can swap back and forth between the two. Now, let me show you how this works. Let's first open up the float variable script. So the float variable, pretty simple, right? It's not much different than our player health variable. We're using a float instead of an int and we've made it a little bit more generic. So there's no reason that this player health one needed to be a player health. All we care about is that it's an int with a value. We don't care that this is the health. It doesn't need to be that specific. It can be a lot more generic and then be reused for things like health, mana, move speed, uh, weapon damage, anything like that that we want to have in there. So here we've just got a float variable, really generic, but that's not what's actually assigned here. So if we look at the enemy, you see, again, we have the ability to put in a whole number or a float number or a constant one or a variable. So to do that, we actually have this float reference wrapper on top of the float variable. So let's take a look at it. First, it's serializable just so it shows up in the inspector. Um, and then we have an option here for use constant. It's defaulted to true, so that way when you put it on to an object or an enemy or something, it's gonna by default just have you put in a value, type it in. But it also has this float variable option, so that way you can reference a float if you want to. And then when you reference it, all you care about is the value. So if you're in your code, you don't have to know that it's a variable versus a constant. It just picks it up automatically from this float reference. So if it's constant, when we call get on the value, if we turn back the constant value, that's what this does. If this is true, we get the first thing after the question mark. Otherwise, we get the thing after the colon. So if it's not set to use constant, we'll get the variable value. And then same with when we set it. If it's using a constant, we set the constant value. If it's not, then we set the variable value. And now let's look at the enemy real quick. See how that's kind of hooked up. Here you see we just have three float references, current HP, max HP, and move speed. In awake, we actually set the current HP's value to the max HP value. Remember, right now the max HP is using a um, constant value. Oh, where's that guy at? Right there. 
is using the constant value of 200 and we're actually setting the variable value on this current HP to 200. In fact, let's change this up. Let's make this, uh, let's go with 150. And then I'm gonna select current health. And when we play, just watch, you'll see the, the value of this changes to 150. There we go. And as I drag this up and down, you see the value of that HP bar goes up and down too. Okay, so let's go back over to the code one more time. Um, and the, the last thing I want to show in here is this float reference drawer. So this is not a super clean, great class right now. I was just kind of figuring out how, how they have these hooked up in the uh, demos that I saw and then trying to semi recreate that. I haven't used property drawers a whole lot, but um, they're pretty simple. The way it works, uh, we just define the type of object that we want to draw for. In this case, it's a float reference. And then whenever that float reference shows up in the inspector as a property of something, so basically a serialized field or a public field, uh, it'll use this code to draw it instead of the default code. So without this, here, actually, let's just show it, right? So if I save this, comment out the attribute there, when I go into the enemy, you see the default is like this. So it's a checkbox with a value and a variable underneath it. So you'd have to switch between them and then put in the value in the correct thing. Now this custom editor or property drawer really just changes that out so that we have a drop down menu to switch between constant and variables and then um, only the correct field shows up basically. So we're going to talk about some other ways that this could be useful. So imagine I have these enemies here, and I've also got a player, right? So let's create a, another float variable, and we'll call this uh, player HP, right? And then I've got a player game object in here, and, and maybe the player's health is changing throughout the game, and the enemies need to do something based off of that health. Now, there are a couple ways I could set this up. I could have them look at the player and then find its health and check, say, like, hey, you know, maybe if the player's under 50 health, I want to chase them. If they're over 100, I want to run away. Now, we could, again, couple this so that the enemy looks at the player health and finds it somewhere in the code. Or with this kind of a setup, we could just add another field in here, like uh, public float reference uh, observed health, right? And then this could be the player's health. It could be any other health variable that we want this enemy to observe and watch and then react to, right? So now I've got this field here. I can just swap in a variable, add in player HP, and now my enemy can check that variable to do its logic and not need to know that it's the player. In fact, I could swap it out at runtime, swap it out at design time and have you know, this enemy reacts to some other entity's health, maybe. Maybe it reacts to another enemy's health. And then I, I'm not rewriting or changing the code. I'm just creating new variables in here and reassigning them. Right? So I could have one enemy care about another enemy's health or player's health or, or any other variable like that. And it's just really flexible. There's a, a lot you can do to kind of build up different game systems without adding code. And you can give the design team a lot of flexibility to do some really cool stuff. Now, the more advanced uh, version of this dives into using these for like collections and events. If you want to keep a collection of enemies, you can do it this way without having a singleton, without having to tightly couple your code at all. You just have like this thing looks at this collection of enemies and does something based off of it, right? It could be an AI that looks at them and picks the right one to kill. It could be, you know, a player selection thing that just needs to know what ones are there when you click and picks the right one. A a anything like that, Any anything where you could have a collection or something like that, it I think it makes a lot of sense too. But then again, it all they also dive into using it for eventing. So if you want to send a, a message from one thing to another, you can just kind of link them up with these scriptable objects relatively cleanly and again without having to add or change code, which I think is pretty, pretty cool, pretty useful um, as long as you keep an eye on it and make sure it doesn't turn into a mess. But I, I think it's a good system. It's pretty cool. I've been playing around with it, like I said, for a couple weeks now, just kind of loosely trying it out. And I've been pretty impressed. So I'm going to keep trying out this pattern and using it in little projects here and there to see if I want to stick with it. But like I said, so far, I think it's cool. I think it's pretty interesting and um, pretty powerful. And like I said, makes for slightly cleaner code. So if you've tried this out before and you have some feedback, like maybe you tried it and it works great, you loved it, 
Let me know if you've had problems with something like this in the past. I'd, I'd also love to hear about that. Just kind of get more perspective. So far, I've only heard good things about it, but you know, may, maybe there are some drawbacks that I'm not thinking of or the original presenter didn't think of. So if you like the video, please uh, you know, thumbs up, like it, subscribe, share it with your friends. And um, if you're interested in learning more, I'll probably do more videos on this soon, but also go check out the video in the link that really dives deep into um, how this whole system works and how they use it across a bunch of different projects to, to be really productive. All right, thanks for watching.